Hello everyone. So this is the last lecture, and in this lecture, I'll be showing you what is Records Keeper and uh, how this use case uh, is effective in case of the blockchain. And uh, and we'll summarize whatever we have learned in a very short, you know, part. So Records Keeper is a record keeping solution for individuals and businesses. We struggle a lot. I have personally struggled a lot in my personal record keeping in Dropbox, Google Drive, or email, and we also actually struggled a lot. Uh, in our business previous business when we actually had to follow and track everything manage everything tax returns compliance documents agreements nda doc invoices and everything in a proper structured format so that, that's a required in the compliance so we thought of solving this problem by using uh, you know our latest technology so we will this records keeper so records or documents stored in the records keeper are immutable you cannot alter or change the documents you can always upload the new version but you cannot alter the documents also every document will remain unique so you it's not possible to create a duplicate documents of the same exactly same document until unless the document is somewhere different right records remain highly structured without explicit efforts so if suppose you want to structure everything in a you know in such a way so that you get the access of a documents whenever you want because sometime when you need it you are always in hurry right let's say you want want your spouse uh, passport if you want your mother's pan card you know or or the you know the social security number card and also this can be actually quickly accessed because that structuring is not being done explicitly without any efforts of course there are auto reminders on the recurring documents or records like tax returns so suppose if there is a quarterly uh, compliance requirements so you want to create a folder for that so you can set up a, uh, reminders so whenever there is a deadline comes you'll get a reminder on email and then you can just upload via email you can just reply as within in the attachment and document will be kept structured for you and highly private using pki infrastructure so we use the public private key cryptography to store the documents so you can choose to encrypt everything and you know everything will be available only if you enter the passphrase you own the passphrase we do not have any copy of the passphrase it's like, just like a bitcoin wallet password if you if you lost it it's it's, it's lost right and also record is stored you know also creates a proof of existence right because if you uploaded a document we are recording everything in the, the in, as a transaction into the blockchain so you can claim at a certain stage that you had access to that document at particular date and time this is very difficult to understand what is the use case but just imagine if you created or uh, you took a picture in the for the national geography right and somebody stole it and saying that it's his so why uh, you know and how can you actually prove that it is owned by you the idea is once you take a picture you try to upload it in the records keeper and create a link right for your proof of existence poe link so using that poe link you can publish your articles and saying hey, this has been recorded into the blockchain as a proof of ownership or the existence of course this solution can be used for the kyc like dropbox or you know the google drive cannot be used for the kyc with records keeper you can do your or get your kyc done very quickly with just a checkbox and and allow that's it it is available in saas as well as a on premise solution so use cases are you know managing structuring corporate records through automation health record management for healthcare industry invoices and receipt management system for the supply chain logistic and e-commerce industry kyc solution for banks archiving solution for large enterprises proof of ownership creation of and existence in many more so it's a documents structured cloud for the documents built on top of blockchain it's a better than dropbox and google drive trust me you should try it and see how it works that's it if you have any question related to this let me know and i'll go through the, now the you know the overview of the document i'll show you you know we'll revise revise everything how we you know what we learn so we gone through the definitions seeing what is the word and how we are going to use it then we have gone through the real life use cases or sorry the an analogy of the blockchain using the books right and uh, we understood that what is private and public blockchain public blockchains are anybody can read and write private blockchains is more controlled by a single entity or a group of entity and is easy to implement because you know the security need to be handled by one person but public blockchain it is more complex and difficult to implement because you know it is distributed ledger and nobody owns it everybody actually need to be sure that it is safe and secure so the algorithms are more complex 
In lecture 5, we have seen the sample transaction of Alice and Bob where we were transferring the money and seeing that how the transactions are being recorded. In consensus algorithm, we've seen that 101A, 101B and 101C, which transaction or the block will be accepted based on the longest chain rule. Then we've seen that when to use the blockchain, when a distributed you know, nature of the technology is required, when the uh, immutability is required. So these are the most common cases where this, uh, you know, and when you need a high security, that's also that cases when the blockchain can be used. Security, why it is more secure? Because it's a distributed first. Second, you know, it also follows the longest chain rule. And it, third, it is computationally expensive to attack on the blockchains. That's the reason. And then we saw the 51% uh, you know, attack, right? And the 51% attack, uh, we also saw the Eclipse attack where you crippled the per certain segment of the nodes and tried to acquire the network using the 51% attack again. Then we see the options of multi-chain, uh, you know, the open chain and the Ethereum and the Bitcoin core to set up your own private blockchain. And at last in this lecture, we were summarizing everything. And if you still have uh, any question or query, please ask. If you like the course, please give me a good rating so that it can help others to you know join the course. Thank you. Thank you for your time.